Hello, Assalamualaikum guys. Uh, today we are going to continue in the base plate um, design. So we are going to be uh, going to be solve an example today. That is for the base plate subjected to movements. So we have a W two hundred into twenty six column that is assumed fixed at the bottom for the analysis and design. So if it is it is fixed at the bottom, so it will be a moment. Uh, the base plate so there the moments needed to be uh, developed and need to be transferred to the base plate the service axial dead and live loads are 100 kN and 165 kN respectively the bending is about the strong axis and the service dead and live load moments at the bottom of the columns are 20 and 35 kN meters the ratio of the concrete to base plate area a2 over a1 is considered equal to 2 Design the base plate for the column using A36 steel. The concrete strength FC prime is 20 megapascals. So all of the related input data is with us. So we can start solving our beam column for the base plate subjected to movements. So your P U is equal to 1.2 of dead load and 1.6 of the live load that is given in the statement 100 kilo newtons and 165. You will get your PU equal to 384 kilonewtons. Your MU is equal to 1.2 of dead load uh, movements and the dead live movements. So those will be 20 and 35, and you get 80 kilonewton meters. Corresponding to that, you can get your uh, E by dividing your MU with PU. Okay, so you will get your E that comes out to be equal to 208 millimeter. Okay. so now keep this e value with you that will be your first step if you go towards the procedure in the last slides in the last lectures you will see that uh, your capital e calculation of sorry small e that calculate the eccentricity is your first step so keep this eccentricity is with you now in the next step we will calculate the bearing stress fp this bearing stress formula is already with us uh, having the ratio of a2 over a1 equal to 2 keep this in your formula and get your answer so you are getting 15.63 that is less than uh, 22.10 from this formula okay so you are getting the next one formula and you are getting 15.63 so it comes out to be equal to 15.63 so keep this fp with you fp this bearing stress is going to be used to calculate capital a1 so by using all of the input parameters you can get your a1 equal to 75752 mm square and just by taking this you considering the square base plate you can take square root of it and then round the values and you can get the 315 to 350 mm okay so this 350 uh, now will be your be into n so if we want n out of these two values so it will be same like 350 mm this n you can uh, use to calculate n by 6 on one side and n by 2 on the other side Okay, so your eccentricity is two zero eight. So n by six value is fifty eight point three. N by two is one seventy five. So your eccentricity is greater than n by two. So what does it means that anchor bolts are required? You are going to be assume that the anchor bolts are placed at an edge distance of forty millimeter. Okay, so edge distance for the anchor bolts are that we have been discussed in the last uh, lecture also. Uh, that uh, let's suppose that these are the flanges for the column, and you are providing anchor bolts like this. So edge distance will be this W. Okay, so the cent from this distance is the center of the bolt to the edge of the base plate. So it is considered equal to forty millimeter. So if this is the particular case, then n dash will be equal to the 350 minus 40. So if you see from the figure in the previous slides and in 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 the lecture there we have discussed this n dash from the figure that was from the center of uh, the anchor bolt towards the compression phase of the column, okay, of, of the base plate. So it comes out to be 350 minus 40. Just you are subtracting the Uh, edge distance for the anchor bolt, so you are getting your n dash. And what about the a dash? A dash it was the same distance from the center of the bolt, uh, but uh, towards to till the center of the column itself. 
so it comes out to be half of the total dimension that will be n by 2 and this we are subtracting the edge distance out of it so it will be equal to 135 millimeter now for the initial uh, design or the for the first you can say trial you are calculating or considering sorry f1 is equal to fp 15.63 so in that particular way you have the formula of capital f where f1 is multiplied by with b and dash divided by 2 so you have all of the parameters with you now you can calculate capital f it will be 847928 newtons this f can be used to calculate the capital a value in terms of two quadratic roots of this equation and out of these two roots you are uh, selecting out the suitable one and how to decide about the value of the a we have already discussed in the uh, theoretical lecture so from there you can take uh, how to get the suitable value of capital A. So capital A is 197 millimeter. So that is sufficiently lesser than N dash. So we are selecting this value. So T U now we can, can be calculated very easily because now we have this capital A with us. Uh, that was unknown earlier. So now we have F1 AB divided by 2 minus P U. So you are getting 54.8 kilonewtons as your answer. So continuing with the example, uh, for the column section, D is 207 millimeter and BF is 133. Now, can you calculate the thickness of the base plate as your first TP, okay, as I have told you, in the, in, as we have discussed in uh, the last lecture, in which the TP1 needed to be calculated. This TP1 is equal to small L 2 F1 uh, divided by 0 0.90 Fy whole square under root. So how to get this L, this L will be the larger of, mean the maximum out of N and N dash. We are not talking about small m over here. Small m and from there the movements will be calculated based on two criteria and out of which the maximum movement will be used to calculate the uh, MPLU, I mean the thickness of the base plate. That will be TP2. So later on we will calculate the second thickness of the base plate based on the different criteria. Mean small m will going to be considered over there. So here this uh, first value of the thickness of the base plate is based on small l, this cantilever length and this cantilever length will be maximum of small n into n dash. So it comes out to be 121.8. So keep this value of thickness of the base plate with you. That will be TP1. Okay, so highlight it and keep with you. Next one is the movement uh, TP2 to calculate TP2. Next step is so how to calculate the second thickness of the base plate based on the other criteria that will based on the movement from the plate bearing side. So this will be MPLU1. So this MPLU1 can be calculated further based on two factors when you have A greater than M or when you have A less than M. So we have discussed the formula to calculate the movements when you have A is greater than 1, either will be cases be there. So if your A is greater than M, we can calculate your FC at first. Then MPLU, inputting the FC value in the equation. You have small m already with you and you are getting your answer equal to 40,004 Newton millimeter per meter. So that will be MPLU for A is greater than 1 because for our case A is greater than M. If greater than your A will be less than M then corresponding formula you will use. So either of the formula is going to be case will be used. So your case is your A is greater than M. Now MPLU2 second movement uh, you will calculate based on the movement from the anchor bolt side. Okay, so this will be the distance of the anchor bolt first of all L1 you have to calculate. Okay, so L1 will be equal to the total overhanging portion minus the edge distance. Okay, so M, this is M overhanging portion. Okay, so if M is uh, along the web we have considered, so this will be in, in either direction. So here we have M. Okay, so M will be L1 
uh, m minus 40 so m will be the total length and minus edge distance w this 40 is w so you are getting your l1 equal to 36.7 millimeter so total effective width for the anchor bolts will be l1 plus smaller out of l1 and w okay so in this particular case our smaller value is l1 okay l1 is 36.7 while W is equal to 40 millimeter. So your L1 is smaller as compared to W, that smaller value we are using over here. It, the WE will be 73.4. So you are getting your MPLU. This will be MPLU2. So out of these two, larger of value will be from the plate bearing side, MPLU. So this will be uh, 40,000, four Newton millimeter per. So from by using this larger value of MPLU, you are inputting over here and you are getting your TP2, second thickness of the base plate. It comes out to be 26.7. So out of TP1 and TP2, the larger value will be your final answer. So it will be 45.4, I think, out of 45 point something 40 from TP1. So your TP1, mean based on the small L value gives you the larger value of thickness of the base plate. So it will be uh, 50 millimeter after rounding it off. So it will be the larger of the two values calculated above. So finally, uh, as in the first step, first one or two steps, we have calculated B and N and it will be TP. So it will be the dimension of the base plate that you have to be highlighted. And finally, you have to report your answer. Now we are not ending up uh, with the design because later on we have to do the bolt design also because anchor bolts are required. So anchor bolt design is very simple one. You, the area of the bolt is going to be, uh, can be calculated based on the tensile uh, force uh, developed within the uh, bolt itself. So whatever the tensile capacity or the tensile force Tu, the anchor bolt force, tensile force we have calculated earlier, okay, that is needed to be developed depending upon the anchor bolt itself strength that, that was Fu, okay, and the number of the bolts on the tensile phase side that is going to be incorporating and finally this capacity is needed to be uh, incorporated to get your area of the uh, bolt okay so this needed to be balanced so your phi t will be equal to 0.75 and bt will be the num number of tension bolts on tension side so from there by equating these two uh, particular parameters you can get the diameter of the bolt and you can get 20.97 millimeter so by rounding it off it will be 22 millimeter so the capacity of the bolt phi t t n for one bolt you can calculate the formula is with you this is your 22 so finally you can get for one bolt that will be equal to 85,530 newtons. Okay, so this value you can use to calculate the hook length, total hook length that is required that will be LH. Okay, so hook length will be equal to phi t tu divided by 2 half of it and 0.7 fc prime divided by 2 and it will be 139 millimeter comes out to be if you are going to round rounding it up the total hook length will be 150 millimeter. Okay. Now, out of total hook uh, length, you have to calculate the embedded length. That is in AIS specification uh, written as 12 into 2. So you can use this as 300 millimeter. And the total length of the hook bolt now comes out to be 100 plus 300 plus 150. So it will be 550 millimeter in total for the hook bolts. Okay. So what does it mean? Generally, if you see the bolt from uh, the upper side of your base plate, so you can see this is the concrete foundation. This is the base plate, thickness of the base plate. You, your hook bolt is embedded once it is passed through the base plate. It, it is at the bottom of the base plate, then all of the length of the base plate of the hook bolt will be embedded. Then if we come inside the base plate, it will be equal to thickness. The bolt is passed through the thickness of the base plate. Then you have this washer. Then you have this nut. Then you have these screws on the bolt and somewhat uh, part of it that will be plain. 
okay so this will be the part that will be outside the concrete foundation not the concrete material so till there this part is outside okay embedded mean that is inside of it so generally our hook bolt is of this dimension anchor bolt is hook bolt okay so the hook length that we have already in slide number 9 we have calculated it was 150 mm if you remember so hook length means that particular length that is just the hooked part that was 150 mm hook length l small h okay now we talk about the rest of the vertical length okay of the bolt so this after the hook when we are just at the start of the anchor the base plate at the bottom of the base plate okay so here the bolt is this was the embedded length l e m we can say it as okay so it comes out to be 12 into d equal to 300 mm okay now this rest of the part we have considered over here as 100 mm okay as i have told you that part is 100 mm is going to include what are the different parameters is included over here after the embedded length okay just after the concrete foundation we are going to be having the thickness of the base plate over here let's suppose 50 mm in our case okay that part 50 mm after the thickness of the base plate we have to accommodate all of these uh, you can say components mean the washer thickness the nut thickness then these screwed part some part of it and some plain part of it okay so that's all is considered equal to 50 mm over here you can take more than that if you need, if you suppose that this is not sufficient so you can take you consider it more than that okay so but if it is okay so it will be generally okay so you can consider it as 50 mm so you have to accommodate all of these components over here thickness of the base plate and the washer thickness then nut thickness then the screws and certain plain part of it so all of it is equal to 100 mm okay so in this way you have the total length of the hook hook hooked bolt total length of the hooked bolt will be equal to hook length plus embedded length plus rest of the components out of the base plate just at the upper top edge of the base plate and the all from the top of the bolt itself so this is this length is equal to 100 mm so this total is going to give you the total length of the hook bolt that is 550 mm okay so depending upon that you are going to be deciding so dia mainly dia of the bolt is required in a design parameter design uh, once you are designing the bolt then you have to mention and you have to uh, present your results in terms of the dia of the bolt and the total length of the hook bolt so that is required to design your bolt thank you so much